Joining us now live on the phone to talk about that statement and that decision is Kevin Nicholson. Sir, welcome to the program. Dan, thanks for having me. I know this has got to be a difficult couple of days. How did this decision come about, and how are you feeling about it? Are you at peace with it? Is there regret? Where did this decision come from? How did you come to it, and and how are you feeling about it? Yeah, no, all good questions. And and the way that it came about is, honestly, my wife and I, I mean, a series of serious conversations, which is, as the statement you just read said, we had the capacity to certainly – encourage others to do the same, but to go negative and to call out some very distinct differences, myself and and the other major candidates in this primary, which, again, I'm not going to criticize anybody in this show today, but there were opportunities to do that. And we had that conversation. We still think that would have been a very tough road. There's a lot of resources being spent in this campaign right now. And given the stakes of what it means to lose uh, to the left and to lose to Tony Evers at this moment in history, We didn't think that was the right thing for the party, the conservative movement, or the state. And so to your other question, do I have regret? No. We we thought this through. And um, and I said this when we had a debate the other week. God's got a plan. You don't get to control all the variables. Sometimes things happen that in the moment or in the short term you can be very upset about. But in the long term was the best thing to have happen for our family, for the state, and for the future of our country. So that's the bottom line. Um, no regret, but definitely it was well thought out. We came at this from a lot of angles, and I believe it's the right thing to do. It is very rare, though, to see a candidate drop out this close before Election Day. I mean, people are already voting by mail right now. We are, as we stand right now, a month and three days from Election Day. Why make this decision so close to the finish line? Well, I mean, I think as a candidate, you always want to, I mean, look, I felt very strongly that I was the right person to actually be Tony Evers and to do this job. And so you want to make sure that you've exhausted all your options. To your point, you don't want to be sitting there with regret. And so we wanted to do the best we could. Um, I was hoping to do more debates with the other candidates. I think that would have been good for the state, good for the party, good for the movement, for them to hear us all. That did not happen the way that I would have, would have, would have, would have preferred, and I think, again, it would have been better for everybody. But at the end of the day, um, you know, there's still a lot of undecided voters out there in this race. And this will, you know, shape and shift and all sorts of stuff will happen between now and August 9th. Uh, I understand your point. It's about a little more than a month away. But nonetheless, there will be plenty of time for the other candidates that are in the race to, to make their case to voters and then for voters to decide on August 9th. And I'm not going to endorse in this race. I don't think that would be the right thing to do. Um, I think that would be disingenuous at this point. But I do, I do fully plan to and will help both whoever the nominee is on August 10th and, and help Ron Johnson and help the movement going forward. Kevin Nicholson joining me. You are still welcome to take part in our debate on July 27th. If you just want to, like, show up, you can help me moderate it. What do you think? <laughs> How about you and I talk about that on, uh, offline? I'll give you a call. We'll figure it out. Um, <laughs> I'm glad that you're doing that debate. Um, I, yes, and I'm glad that you're doing it. And, in a different world, I'd be very happy to be there myself in, in debating. But it is important. I mean, I, I you know, and you and I talked about this in 2018, too. I mean, I, look, I led every poll in that race, and I ended up losing that primary. But but there, too, I was calling for debates. I think it is important for candidates, um, especially prior to a primary, to, to, to be in front of those primary voters and to answer the hard questions and to show what they can do on their feet. Because as soon as they cross that Rubicon on August 9th and go into August 10th, it gets intense, as you know, and there's going to be a lot of people coming in the mainstream media with a lot of intentionally difficult questions that are meant to set Tony Evers up for success. And so, you know, be candidates in this race and you continue to remember that. My urge to them is that they focus on answering the questions that everybody's worried about. What are we going to do to get our schools back on track? How are we going to get people to want to be police officers again and to make our society more safe? Um, these are core issues. How do we fix our elections? Stop ballot harvesting. It should be stopped. But you got to put the plans forward and put that forward momentum to our conservative base because they want that leadership right now. and They want to see people that can answer those questions. Where do you go from here? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, well, as you know, I've w- continued to work in the private sector and that job, I'll continue to do my job. I'll go back and serve clients and that was always a big part of what I would say to audiences. That's an important mentality to have. Um, I've got three little kids. So, you know, every now and then people tell you, 
go take a vacation. <laughs> I've gotten that in a few texts over the last 24 hours, but I'm going to be going to baseball games with my son and my kids this weekend um, because my son's in a tournament. And, and that's kind of life for us, right? Like three little kids, a real job, you know, the world moves forward. And when it comes to politics, I honestly don't know. I am so proud of what we've done at No Better Friend, and I, I, it was tangible. It's real. We really did help set, define the debate. We talked about school choice in a way that I think made it clear to people this isn't just good for um, certain geographies in our state. This is good for everybody. It's going to actually push forward real solutions and empower families in Wisconsin. So I'm so proud of that, and I think that I want No Better Friend to play a role. I think it'll be a different iteration. We'll figure out what that is. And then when it comes to, like, elections and politics and elected office, I think you know, when there's a, when it's clear, it's clear. And we really don't sit here today thinking, okay, what's next? I, I, that's the furthest thing from my mind, from my wife's mind. I think that will be clear when it makes sense to do it. You ran for the United States Senate in 2018. You made it clear that if Senator Ron Johnson in 2022 decided not to run again, that you would be a candidate there. Obviously, there is a Senate race that is coming up in 2024 as Tammy Baldwin uh, faces her first re-election bid. Obviously, 2022, excuse what? Her second re- no, her, her first re-election bid, her, Dave. Her first, she was first elected in 2018. Correct? Yes. No, 2012. I'm an idiot. No, her yeah, second re-election. All right, yeah. thank you. My producer is trying to save me from myself. She faces her <laughs> second re-election bid in 2024. Uh, are you already looking ahead to that race? Because I think that's the logical question that people would have. You know, I, honestly, in this very moment, and it, it's hard to let people into the decisions in a family like this, it, it truly is not where our head is at. We, I think we just need to restabilize our life, get things figured out as to how we can help these in our election, and, and then just kind of, well, I got a lot of stuff to do around the house, and I got to teach my kid how to drive. So those two things need to happen too. <laughs> um, but I think that that will become more clear as we go forward, right? And I, 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 I'm not being coy or anything like it. We we entered this race to run for governor because I really did think, and I do, this is a matter of urgency. Like we are watching the wheels fall off our society, and I try to do this in a way such that and I, I will say the positive feedback we always got on the campaign is people felt I was really answering questions and I was really trying to lay out. Not a talking point, but a real solution, which, again, is what I urge the candidates in this race to, to continue to do, because that's what people want to hear. And so, you know, it's, it's disappointing that the candidate, you know, the campaign didn't end the way that we would have wanted to, but I'm very proud of having done that and having thrown out the ideas we did the way that we did in a way that I do think affected the other campaigns, too, who are now carrying similar messages, and that's good for everybody. Now, as to what comes next, like I said, I just, I've just i been through two of these things now to know that the world can get topsy-turvy really quick. We certainly didn't see certain variables entering into this campaign the way it did. We just need to let things play out a little bit, and that'll be more clear. It'll what, be clear in the near future. When, 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 you, when you talk about those certain variables, shall I assume you're talking about Tim Michaels <laughs> getting into the race late? Do you sure. believe that yeah, that I was the, the moment that sort of, it made it, very, very difficult for you to have a path forward. Yeah, and look, and, and this, again, I'm not criticizing anyone on the show today. I, Tim has every right to run, and he's certainly spending a lot of resources on it. And, yeah, he's, he's carrying forward a very similar message to the one that my campaign had. And I don't say this to be critical, but when you're spending at a rate of near a million dollars a week um, with a very similar message, it's going to have a real impact on the campaign. And, and like I said earlier, that doesn't leave us in a position where there was no path forward. But it definitely left us in a position where the path forward was to be negative and to draw contrast. And, again, even then, as we, I looked at that, I didn't think that was a very likely road to lead to, to victory, given the amount of resources at play coming from a candidate. So that's where you make the logical decision that, like, look, my goal is not to tear people down, tear a movement down. It just doesn't make as much sense. But to your point, not a variable that I could have predicted when we got in the race, Um so in life, and this is what I always used to try to say to people, to audience when I talk to them, is like, you have to adapt. Like, that was the biggest thing missing from the last two years of our upside-down existence is our political leaders couldn't adapt to new information and to a changing battlefield. And they locked themselves into 
you know, um, ideologically driven policies with regard to a public health issue. And by doing that, they put us all in a very precarious situation relative to schools and the economy and law and order and the whole nine yards. I always said you need people who can look at situations the way they are and adapt. And I think that's what we did when we made this decision, which I think is going to be the best one, not just for our family, but again, for the party and for the movement. You made reference to your opponent spending millions of dollars to get his message out there. Ultimately, did this come down to your opponents being better funded than you carrying admittedly a very, very similar message, not just Michael's, but Rebecca Clayfish as well? Well, funding was always going to be an issue in this campaign, and I'm very thankful for our volunteers, for our donors, for uh, the outside groups that supported us, and I, I know that they certainly put a lot of ads up in the air. We're grateful for that. We can't tell them what to do or how to do it, but we're grateful for their support. Um, but funding's tough, and funding's tough, particularly in this environment with the economy being where it's at. It's really hard to raise money. Um, it's, a, it's a gubernatorial primary, so it's harder. You have a smaller universe of people available. Uh, Rebecca Clayfish was in this race earlier, and certainly um, the Walkers did a lot to help her with fundraising, and I'm not criticizing that, but that was their prerogative, and they did it. So, yeah, it was tough uh, to raise money. There's no two ways about it. Um, again, we're incredibly grateful for the support we did have, volunteers, donors, the whole nine yards, our team itself. But, yeah, that's part of taking the clear idea view of at times you – you believe that you have to test the thesis. And that's, I think, what I said to my wife as we made the decision to do this. Like, we believe that we can win this race. I think once we got in and we saw the battlefield shift really quick, the numbers shift really quick, we proved the point that, yes, we have the potential to win this race. Other people saw that, too. <laughs> it, helped. it affected their decision-making as to what they were going to do. Um, and that's life. And, again, I think that's when you have to adapt, overcome, and then move forward. And then the sun will shine tomorrow. I remain very concerned about the future of our state, of our nation, the, the world we're leaving to our kids. And I, I'm never going to stop caring about that, which really gets to your, your question about what's next. Like, I will never stop caring about what is coming for the future of our state and our country. And however I can best help to leave our, our world in a better position for our kids, I'll be ready to do that when it makes sense to do so. Well, Kevin, congratulations on a great race. I'm sorry things didn't end the way that you obviously wanted them to, but I can tell you uh, just in having multiple conversations with you both on the air and off, dating all the way back to 2018 when you first ran for the United States Senate and sort of burst on the Wisconsin political scene, uh, I continue to believe that you have an incredibly bright future in politics in this state, and I know you won't be a stranger, so best of luck in everything to come, and please stay in touch, sir. Thank you very much, Dan, and I look forward to talking to you soon. He is Kevin Nicholson. I am Dan O'Donnell, and you are listening to The Dan O'Donnell Show. 